So, uh, hi everyone. Hello. Yay. Uh, like what Pretty introduced, I three months ago I made a decision to actually change career. That's why I joined GA to for web development immersive. And it was like on our second week actually Hui Jin came down for a guest lecture oh. with us. And after seeing her work I was very inspired. That's why I created <laughs> created something that I found that actually is also it's interesting to look at but it's also actually a very good tool to actually teach about CSS animation. So okay, uh so why like uh which actually explain a bit like why why we want to do CSS animation. One is why Okay, I don't know. Okay. Don't need to use JavaScript. Yes. It makes life a lot easier. You don't need to do window dot request animation frame, then go and calculate every single frame what to the DOM manipulation at every single frame. Then it's also GPU handle less jank. Oh sorry. I think I see the No wonder. It's the wrong slide. <laughs> We're still happy though, no JavaScript plus jank. Oh no. Okay. I took three tries to get to a correct way yeah, to yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> So it's okay, uh, the part about that uh hardware acceleration jang with regards to how, how CSS animation can help you that I'll, I'll show you that I will demonstrate to that your uh, that to you later. So first just show like what can CSS animation achieve this yes you can see there's still a little bit of javascript but honestly speaking you all would think that there's a lot of math in this but if you all look at the javascript there's no math inside at all mm. completely mathless it's all in <laughs> i see math <laughs> <laughs> that's a just, that's just random <laughs> it's, most of the action is really on the CSS side using animation and animation and uh, <laughs> transition. That's my yeah, So, how to actually use the two main property? Only two, so very easy. But uh, the main point I want to teach you all is how to know when to use transition, when to use animation. Mm -hmm. Because it's sometimes quite confusing. A lot of people use animation when it's actually much easier to just use transition. So transition are generally uh, those that, that you fire once and forget. Ah, I think I'll just show the example. Okay. So when I say fire once and forget, for example, this transition, if I don't trigger it, it will happen. Mm. On load, nothing will happen. You must trigger it. And once you trigger it, you cannot control any more thing. It will just go all the way to the end point that you define for it. And whereas for animation, generally it's loopable. Is you can uh, you also don't need to trigger it at all. It will automatically trigger itself on load, unless you set a delay or something. The principle of transition is based on interpolation. So if I set my start point, end point the CSS animation will handle all the intermediate where it should go. Interpolation, so it won't go anywhere else. It will just go linear straight line from the start point to end point. Whereas animation allows you to set multiple, what we call checkpoints. Uh, in CSS animation term, it's called keyframes. So I'll explain that later. So, so, so syntax for transition, basically you set an initial value then you set a transition on that property. Then what you need to do is trigger it. So uh, how to trigger it? Either you use JavaScript, set a new value to it, element.style, or you can, within CSS, you don't even need to use JavaScript. You can also use all the CSS classes like hover, check, valid, or whatever. Or you can, to be even more smarter way, 
is to use JavaScript plus CSS, use a toggle class change. Why this is a uh, smarter way? Because you can actually, you don't need to write style, change property one, change property two, change property three. You just toggle a new class with all the property you want to change, and each of those property attach it to a, attach a transition to it. So this is uh, this is basically how I did my ping pong. So animation, the difference. As an animation, it's not based on interpolation. It's based it's also based on interpolation, but it allows you to put in all the checkpoints, which we call keyframes. This one need prefix. This one also need prefix. If so, you define your keyframes. Uh, animation. One other thing different from it is you can actually set multiple property. Whereas transition, each transition listen on one property. If you want multiple property, you need to put multiple transitions, which I'll show you later. <laughs> okay. The okay. So timing function. I won't explain it so well. So I just show. The idea is it will allow you to do things that like accelerate, decelerate. So there are a lot of very good demos out there. Okay. Anime. Okay. This one looks a bit weird, but <laughs> let's try again. This one not max. This one not max free, yeah? Yeah, a lot of max. This is a lot of max. Uh, Graphs also. Uh, <laughs> Okay, I think I showed the wrong one. <laughs> <laughs> this is quite light, right? I mean, it's one line. Oh, actually, actually, I'm supposed to show this one. <laughs> <laughs> okay, is in means decelerate, is out accelerate, is in out accelerate then decelerate. <laughs> so generally, you got you all get the idea. When you use this one, actually, you do need to do a lot of math. So, uh, okay, just how when we say when, when sometimes we want to animate more than one property. Okay. <laughs> For keyframes, key, eh? keyframes, you can set multiple properties within the keyframe. For transition, you must put comma, one transition, two transition. Okay. So, just how when we were saying like uh, CSS animation actually helps improve your performance, the important point is to do this, you need to use CSS transform. Using CSS top or left or whatever other properties won't give you as much advantage as compared to just normal DOM manipulation. So actually, we still have a very good article on this. So I won't really cover. But basically, the point is, when your browser renders, it goes through three process, and the topmost process is handled by the GPU. And if you only touch a property that only that only affects the composition, you can avoid using CPU, and it will actually make your transition much smoother. So, okay, this one I'll skip. Basically, I think I'll just go to the fun part, which is my app. Okay. <laughs> so basically, let me explain. So, they'll talk, how did I achieve this without using math? Basically, if you all study physics before, you all know that your x direction and y direction can be separated, which is exactly what I'm trying to teach here, that to make use of transition on different properties, and that's why you see I actually have I actually have an animation which is only on the y direction that you just go up and down and you just need to set the uh, east in and the uh, east out to create the acceleration and deceleration effect Whereas, I then use a transition. 
see the transition here. Yeah, the tran transition on X here to handle the left and right direction. So when you separate this thing out, you you can create this kind of animation. One thing to note is when you are using transform, unlike using left top other kind of properties, because all these properties you can set them individually. I can set my transition to listen for both left and top. But whereas transform, you must set both X and Y at the same time. But for my effect, I cannot afford to, I, I cannot make setting both my X and Y at the same time. So how do you actually cheat it is actually create a wrapper. That's why I have a wrapper, a ball Y and a ball X. So one transition, one transition is applied on the wrapper and the other one is applied on the ball itself. Wow. <coughs> then that, then you can actually separate out <coughs> and apply one of it apply transition S, one of it apply transition Y. That's one way to to do that. Okay. Also in this in this example. Now come to the JavaScript part. Because I also want to, to teach about transition, you also need to touch a bit on transition events. Transition events are callbacks event, which you can listen for when the transition ends, so that you can do certain things like, upon transition end, I want to animate some, some more properties or something like that. How do you do that? Is to add an event listener called transition end. So, and in your whatever listener. In my case, like I said, I actually just use a to toggle class so that I just need to set one, uh, here. one class is my player side, one class is my is on the computer side and basically what I just do is just toggle class so you just go left, go right, go left, go right. And each time I randomize the horizontal speed, so it will look like it's, it's bouncing very randomly. Mm. Basically, your, uh, I, since I'm saying that CSS can achieve it even without using my JavaScript, I can actually even do away with my JavaScript, just use another animation event just to go left and right. But the reason I put JavaScript out there is so that I can randomize the horizontal. Mm -hmm speed to make it look random. <coughs> so now I want to cover on performance. When I initially designed this, I actually used top left because back then second week only. Just learn <laughs> new stuff. So uh, so you can see from here also look very smooth. But according to Hui Jin's eye is like it's very janky compared with translate. <laughs> so, but how to actually prove it? So you, you can use dev tools to do that. Under dev tools, there's this thing called where is it? Timeline. Oh. This is how y'all check your CSS performance. Timeline under timeline, y'all can record mm -hmm. do a record. So let's say down here, I look at pain since I'm only interested in the rendering performance. Okay, so let's say finish. So finish. Okay, this one is the top left one. So you all see actually a lot of the frames exceeded the 60 FPS. All these red points means it's exceeding the 60 FPS. So it will result in jank. And there's also a very nice... Okay, let's say I only focus on this 0.5 second. There's a very nice... Pick up the console. Chuck down here. I'll show you how much time is actually spent in rendering. 
So let's try and compare with translate. So you can see from here is already look much better. And so let's take this take this okay. let's try and compare apple to apple. So I take two hundred milliseconds here. Versus okay, okay uh, roughly there, two hundred milliseconds here. So you see, in rendering down here, it actually spent eight milliseconds versus. So there's a real difference in terms of performance. Depending on laptop, on my laptop just now, I see it's like three times difference, but different. <laughs> but that's the point I trying to get across, which is that use CSS animation plus transform, and you will make your animation much smoother. So, thanks for <laughs> listening. Thank you. Any questions? Questions. I have one. <laughs> I've always got questions. Um, how many frames per second is good in Google's mind? Is it 30 or something? Or what are they aiming for? 60. 60. 60. Oh, shows how much I know about animation. There's a reason for it being 60, being the fact that your the average monitor refresh rate is 60 FPS. So the reason why the animations look janky um, when you don't hit 60 FPS is because then the refresh rate and your animation are not in sync. That, that's what's causing the jagged, jaggedy look. That, are that they capped at 60 FPS then? To keep it, it in sync? Because I know a lot of games cap their frames per second to try to sync to, with yeah, the monitor. To keep it, they, they, it to it's speed. important to keep it constant yeah. rather than variable. Okay. Then that was, that's when if you're playing like Counter-Strike, then you suddenly you, you are, you're not smooth. Hmm. So I think it's it's more of a, you want it in sync with your monitor refresh rate at any time. Hmm.